Hello everyone and welcome to the Healthy Morning Channel. My name is Maria Klyovkov and I am the Executive Director of the Healthy Morning Revolution. I'm actually the founder of the Healthy Morning Revolution and it is my pleasure to be with you here today. Our topic for today is all about hurtful words and this is something that I wanted to talk about ever since clients and participants in the Healthy Morning Revolution Live Launch came to me and talked to me about words that have been really hurtful to them uh, in their grief process. So when we're talking about hurtful words, part of what we're talking about are what's called buck-up messages. And the buck-up messages are things like keep busy, be glad you had them for as long as you did, keep your chin up, um, there's an angel watching over you, and, and it's meant to, to help nurture you along and yet that's not what it feels like. For a person who's grieving, those messages can be quite devastating. There are also messages like move on messages and the move on messages are things like life goes on, um, other people need you, things to encourage you to move forward in your grief journey usually before you're ready to. Um, the message that I often received when I was going through um, the grief journey of losing my mother, losing my father, losing my best friend, um, was be strong. And it was a reminder that I was strong, but it certainly wasn't very helpful. And if you want to hear more about that story, then I encourage you to go over to my podcast at Healthy Morning Revolution Radio and, and listen to the episode that talks about uh, hurtful messages because I talk all about that experience over there. Um, the link to it is in the description down below. So the message that I want to talk to you about today are the messages that encourage you to seek closure. So some of the move on messages are things like you need to seek closure. Um, this isn't going to bring them back. Time heals all wounds. That's really what I want to talk about today. Because if you've heard messages like that and you've been in your grief process, then you know just how hurtful that can be. You know how challenging it can be to hear somebody tell you you need to seek closure when every part inside of you is saying no I need to connect with them I need to find where they are because what's going on inside of you that's the truth of it you know what you need and closure is not what you need and this whole notion of closure I think is a misconception in all honesty because our grief journey is all about helping us to move through our experience of having our loved one here in real time in in the physical presence we need to let go of their physical presence but we need to do that in our own time and the only way to truly let go of somebody's physical presence is to begin to find where the relationship is now Mitch Albom in his brilliant book Tuesdays with Maury talks about wisdom that Maury Schwartz shared with him which is that death ends a life and not a relationship and so when we spend time finding where that relationship is, that's when we can really begin to heal our loss of, of not having them in the physical realm because we've, we're finding where the relationship is now. And so this notion of seeking closure um, when we're talking about severing the relationship, that's not closure. Well, what the closure is really meant to be is the completion of their physical presence. And like I said, that's a transitional thing and it takes time. It takes a lot of time, but it also takes effort. It takes conscious attention to the work. And the work is the grief that you're feeling on the inside, that sadness, that heaviness, that needs to be converted into mourning and external expression so that you can get it up and out of your body and so that you can explore and discover the grace and the beauty of, of where that relationship is now. So this notion that time heals all wounds is a fallacy if you're just letting time click by, but what you're doing is you're avoiding your grief. So what I wanna encourage you all to do is if you have messages like this, if people are giving you this misinformation we need to be gentle and compassionate because the reality is people aren't taught how to grieve and how to mourn. People aren't taught what to say and what not to say. People who dare to speak, because there are many, and I'm sure you have some friends, who, who prefer not to say anything to you and they prefer not to call you because they don't know what to say, right? They don't want to deliver a hurtful message. For people who are delivering these messages, they don't mean harm. They, they mean to be supportive of you. And it is 
wholly unfair that as the person who is grieving, you actually need to maybe be the educator and, and help the people in your, in your realm, the people who are, are looking to be supportive of you, um, that you need to help them to understand what you really do need at this time. And what you need is someone to listen to you, not someone to give advice, even if it's well-meaning but misinformed, right? So what they're looking to do is they're looking to make your life better. And what you can do is very gently say, I really appreciate what you're trying to do, but honestly, that doesn't help right now. When we speak our truth around these kind of messages that are coming into us, then we teach other people ever so gently, and it's a loving act to teach someone how to be there for you in your grief journey. And so the loving act is to inform them and to teach them, I don't need to be fixed. I don't need advice, right? What I need is for you to be present with me in my journey. So you can ask me, um, how are things going in my world right now, if you're interested in hearing the answer. If all they want to hear is, I'm doing fine, that's not the person that you share your story with. So for you, it's also really important that you begin to choose carefully and selectively who you share your story with, who you share your memories with. I also speak more about that in the podcast. So I encourage you to go over to the podcast um, and by all means, if this information is helpful to you, think of all of those people who you would love to educate, but you don't want to be the one to say it. Share this with them. Help them to understand what you need to support you, right? If somebody's not been through grief before, and we're in our first grief, grief um, a generation that's been without any grief, because medicine is causing us to live longer, right? This pandemic, the grief pandemic that's coming along with the COVID pandemic, that's changing things up quite a bit. And yet there are still people who have never experienced grief of somebody who's died who's close to them. And so we need to be a little um, gracious with them and we need to allow them the space to, to not know how to be with us. And we also have to be willing to share that with them. So if you're not wanting to be the one to tell them, but you do need them to learn this lesson, then I invite you to share this video with them. Um, share them with all your friends, because you never know who might need this information or who might need to pass this information on to somebody. Please make sure to like, to write comments, and in particular, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, the Healthy Morning channel, so that you get notified every time we put a video up. If you have subjects that you want me to cover during these talks, please, by all means, let me know what they are. You can contact me by putting a comment down below, or you can reach me at healthymorning.com. I will put all of that in the descriptions. Much love to all of you. Ease and grace in your grief journey is my wish for you. Namaste.